Hi, welcome to the PACET JavaScript Learning Series. I'm Marty Baker. In this video, we'll be learning about return values from functions. We'll look at how the proce browser processes a function and sends a return value back to the calling location. We'll look at example code, including the basic syntax to create a return statement. We'll look at the other possibilities of return statements. There are some important concepts about return values and using multiple return values that I'll cover. We'll talk about the key takeaways you should have after watching this video. I'll provide you with some additional print learning resources and a short list of links for more learning possibilities. And I'll cover what you can do after watching this video. Functions can return values directly to the location in the code where the function was called. The value that is returned can be any data type valid in JavaScript, a string, an integer, a float, a number, a boolean value. A function can have more than one return statement, but as soon as your code hits the first return statement, the function returns to the calling location of your code. So the first return statement ends the function's processing. How does the browser process the return statement? Well, a function is called from someplace within your code. The browser starts processing all the JavaScript statements within your function and finds a return statement. The browser saves the value associated with the return statement, stops the processing of the function, and sends the value back to where the call to the function was made. The syntax for the return statement can't be any more straightforward. We'll look at that in just a second. In the example code, I'll create a function that calculates the tax on an amount of a sale. The user will be asked to provide two values, the amount of the sale and the tax rate to be charged. A function will be called that accepts the values supplied by the user, calculates the sales tax, and returns the sales tax to the location in your code where the function was called. Time to start coding. I've set up a function called calc tax. I'll work with this more in just a moment. First, the syntax of a return statement. Syntax of a return statement is the keyword return and then the value that you want to have it returned. This value represents the information that you want to send back to the calling location. I'll leave the syntax of the return statement there and update it in just a few moments. Going over the code that is already set up in this example, I've created a prompt that asks the user for the total of the purchase and assigns it to a variable, float sales tax. A second prompt has been created asking for the sales tax rate and asks it that the rate be a decimal number. This is assigned to the variable float tax rate. And then we make a call to the actual function calc tax sending it those two variables float sales total, float tax, and you will see that an assignment is made to a variable called float tax. In this case, the code is expecting the value back and making the assignment. A function has been declared above on line 16 that accepts two parameters. The processing by the browser sees the calls, calls the function, passes the argument to the parameters, and the code completes the function. Time to start writing some new code. Starting with declaring a variable, this variable will hold the value of the floating amount times the float rate, and then to make sure that the variable will hold a value that can be worked with nicely, I'll start by fixing the value to a two decimal placed number, and then casting the variable to assure that it is a floating point number. And then finally, we'll return the, the value of that variable back to our calling location. So var float sales tax is going to be equal to the float amount times the float rate. And then we're going to set it to two decimal places and cast as a floating point number and then float sales tax is 
equal to parse float and float sales tax to fixed two decimal places close that parse float parentheses and semicolon and we'll change value here to float sales tax okay, then back down to our original code where we make the call you'll see that we have assigned the float sale tax returned in the function to float tax and we're going to also cast this value just to make sure that we can work with it nicely cast the total of the sale to a floating point number and that's going to be float sale total which we got from the prompt equal to parse float float sale total and now let's go ahead and do our alert alert your sales tax amount is and take the float tax to display it forgot my plus sign there for concatenation another plus sign for concatenation the total of your sale will be and we're going to put in a parenthesis here so that the addition of float sale total and float tax will be the first thing that takes place in our alert I'm going to correct the spelling of sale and I'm going to save this and run it in Internet Explorer for a change and I'm going to tell it to allow blocked content and what is the total amount of your purchase I'm going to make it $100 and I'm going to make my sales tax, tax rate 0 0.098 and it comes back with your sales tax amount is 9.8 and the total amount of your sale is $109.8 it's important to remember that a function can have multiple return statements I'll provide you with some examples of a function with multiple return statements when you work with HTML forms and JavaScript as soon as the browser hits the first return stop statement, the function stops processing. What should you know now? Functions can return a single value using the return statement. Return statements are assigned a value of any data type. What should you remember about the return statement? Return statements are used to return a value to a calling location return statements and all processing within the function. While functions can have multiple return statements, only one is sent back to the calling location. So remember that functions are reusable pieces of code. Therefore, you can use JavaScript structures such as if and else statements to determine which return statement will be sent back to the calling location. Remember always to test your code, i.e. Firefox, Mozilla, Chrome, Safari, and Opera at a minimum. So what are your other resources? So your additional printed learning resources include your CIW certification partner electronic materials from books 24-7. Remember to um, look at JavaScript, a beginner's guide, fourth edition, chapter four, using functions and calling functions in your scripts. And some links for you for additional learning. W3Schools JavaScript return statement. There's the URL. The New Boston beginning JavaScript tutorial. The return statement and again a YouTube video of 5 minutes and 32 seconds there's the URL for that and a JavaScript tutorial functions declarations and expressions returning a value so what are your next steps so first of all I always say practice makes perfect um, if you feel comfortable go ahead and copy the code that's provided for you after this video run it to see if it works for you 
And if you feel you have a good understanding of return st statements, here's your code challenge. Create a web page that asks users for their age. Create a function that accepts the age of the user. If the user is older than 30, tell the user they are getting old. Otherwise, tell them they have plenty of time yet to party. Um, if you need any additional help, always ask for your instructor or mentor for that help. Thank you for watching this video in the JavaScript Learning Series. I'm Marty Baker.